Hey everybody, this is James Pelton. I hope you're having a beautiful Tuesday. I hope that you have not been rug pulled today. Um, that would be just awful. Um, we are here today. We call this, my team put this together, the Crypto Avengers. And I like that. That's cool. But we do have to pick who is who um, in the Avengers. So I will, you know what? I'll take the hit and I'll be Thor. Um, that's, uh, that's what I'll go ahead and be. But what I'd like to do, first off, if you're in the audience, please hit the like button. We need that. Appreciate you doing that. Hopefully you bonks internet works for us here. Um, he's out in the boonies a little bit, and internet's not always the best. Um, but Satellite Link is coming for you, uh, you bonks, from Elon Musk himself. So uh, be uh, Starlink. Wasn't, isn't that the name of it? Starlink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be ready for that. So yeah, hit the like button. If you have any topics that you want us to talk about during this time, questions for anyone in particular, um, we, I know we're going to be wanting to talk about rug pulls, how to make the, play, the space safer, what plays do we actually still believe in, uh, is there is it possible to make money in the markets the way that they are uh, and whatever else comes our way. So what I want to do quickly, uh, we can't do this. Uh, you can't spend like 10 minutes on each person or there would be nothing else. But if you guys want to just quickly, a lot of us, you know, we have our communities kind of intertwined here. A lot of us might not know certain people that are here. So just a quick introduction and maybe what would separate what would be kind of your unique selling point for your channel compared to the rest of crypto or DeFi channels that are out there? So I'll go first. I'm James Pelton. Um, I think that I'm I don't have particularly good insights. Like I make a lot of bad calls. I'm a terrible judge of character, and it's like I know this is a great sales pitch for my channel. Um, what I think, what I've decided that I'm good at is just being honest, <laughs> and so and that's actually like seems to be valuable in the space. So I'm I'm rolling with that. Honest Jim is what we're going to call me uh going forward. So let's let's just go kind of clockwise Brady Bunch style. So Sean, how about you go next? Yeah, g'day. Uh Sean, g'day crypto. Probably the biggest thing, thanks for having me on everybody. It's a pleasure to be here is focusing on the community side um because without the community there's really no project as well. Um, and then for myself, coming across with as much trust and transparency as I possibly can. If I miss out on the facts or the facts change, I'm happy to admit uh, false or correct myself as well. I don't have an ego and I don't get my back up and just want to be able to deliver the best high quality content so people can create an informed decision. Beautiful. I love it. All right. How about you, Jack? Yeah. So I think for me, the biggest thing is I mean, I've been living off of DeFi full time for just over uh, two years now. Um, so I'm trying to kind of share my insights in terms of the strategies that have worked for me over the past two years with, you know, avoiding rugs as much as we can, which has been a interesting year so far with that. But, um, you know, they're always going to happen. But yeah, so I've been living off DeFi for two years. So really my main focus is sharing strategies and, and different ideas and different projects that are coming out you can utilize to sort of get to that goal. Um, so that's my main focus and yeah, really what I, what I try and uh, focus on with the channel. Love it. Um, then we'll go over to your friend, Andy. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, Andy. I like how in the intro, James, you said, I'll take the hit and I'll be the most attractive man on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse me, Thor, what, how do you get that? Uh, hey, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I am your friend. Andy, nice to meet you. Um, as far as my channel goes, uh, I don't know. I'm a crypto boomer. I love I love orange coin go up. I love Bitcoin a lot. Uh, I'm a bit I'm a uh, Bitcoin and flux bull. So those are two things. I talk a lot about entrepreneurship though and making money, side hustles and stuff on my channel. So I'm not just uh, crypto. Um, so that may be something a little bit different. But yeah, this is fun to see everybody's faces and and be on here and stuff. Thanks Except for putting for it together. Yeah, actually, uh, Jack really put this together. He got in touch with me um, December sometime. It's like, hey, let's do this massive YouTube uh, get together thing. So I was like, yeah, great idea. Let's do it. So thanks, Andy. Appreciate you. Uh, Murdoch, how about you, brother? Yeah, well, first off, thanks for having me. <clears throat> um, and, it, and it's kind of crazy, right? Because when Jack was putting this stuff together, I was not doxed yet. So over the like, so I've started the channel about a year ago. And this whole time, I've chose not to to come on camera. Well, 
I went ahead and uh, and bought this all this all this camera stuff, right? So I decided that it'd be fitting to kind of start showing my face. Uh, but I think one thing for me that I want to do uh, in the in the future or or soon is share a little bit more of like what goes on in my personal life because uh, I think that there's some things that that I've probably gone through that are probably that you know, a lot of the audience might be able to, to relate to. So just trying to figure out a way to captivate the same like crypto people, but also tie in like personal stuff or, or, you know, life lessons that I've learned, or like Andy was saying, like typical business stuff, right? Because outside of this, I, I run a business and I'm right now putting together a business plan for another uh, IRL business or brick and mortar company. So that's what, uh, that's what I hope to do in the future. I love it. Yeah, no, I think that's so powerful because I think a lot of people look at influencers as experts mm -hmm. and I'm always like, you are so misguided. If right, you right. treat me as an expert, like I'm more here to show my honesty and integrity. And like you said, share kind of my life, my journey, my story, show you, Hey, I'm going through rug pulls and trying to navigate right. and make money all the same. So I, I love that. I think that's great. Cool. Um, before we get to Justin, Jack, when do we get your face? <laughs> Oh man, that's a that's a good question. Um, maybe at some point, right? The the, okay. the only reason that I haven't done it yet is just because, really, is just the I also own a business outside of this, and I kind of wanted to keep the two separate since I started the channel. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe we'll uh, we'll do it one day. Maybe Murdoch I need to hit you up in terms of the uh, the camera equipment because that is not my uh, yeah that is not my area of expertise. Um, so I've maybe you, I'll, I'll hit you up. Yeah, me, me either. Andy's been helping me. Uh, he's been bug your friend Andy's been bugging me for a long. He bugged me for a long time to get a better camera. I was just using my iMac camera for the longest time, and then he's like, "No, get a better camera, get a better microphone." And so he's been helping me out quite a bit. Um, let's go over to Justin, who is also helps me out. So I want to shout out to him. He helps me out so much <laughs> with my you, community. Uh, my community would not happen without Justin. So I appreciate you, Pocket. Uh, but go ahead, introduction. Yeah, Justin, aka Pocket Aces, um, came started YouTubing only five, six, five months ago, I guess, and uh, just sort of hustled in the industry, really just trying to quit my day job, and uh, definitely took a lot of pointers from, uh, well, most of you guys here, to be honest with you, um, and your friend Andy, I do have to give you a little shout out because a lot of your hustle talk and that kind of stuff was really what kind of gave me uh, the gusto to start just being a, a pillar in this in this industry or in this whatever space um and so i've modded for places i've uh i've um community managed for places i threw up a discord for some guy named james pelton and basically just sort of said hey come in here and and this is your discord and and luckily he after a lot of po poking he said yes um so yeah and then just really trying to be and I, I guess honesty is obviously one thing but really i just love helping people uh that's really my one and only goal and i think i've done a i, I hope a good job of doing that uh and being hopefully something for everybody to lean on and kind of the little guy right now and, and looking forward to to growing but showing people how to grow um so yeah oh geez Look yeah, at you guys. Pocket Aces is, is the mod father. Yeah, no, <laughs> Justin definitely did that. He put together a full Discord for my community. And then he's like, hey, could you hop into your Discord? And yeah, he had to keep, you, if anyone has ever tried to get in touch with me, you have to like ping me 40 times before I actually take any action. And so he's like, hey, this Discord community of yours has been running without you for like two weeks. Could you hop in? I'm like, all right, I'll go ahead and join in. And uh, he's been a lifesaver for me on that. So let's go over to uh, Yabonx. How you doing, brother? Hey, Jimmy, everybody. It's Yabonx here. Hey, I, got, I got my own face on my shirt. Anyway, uh, good to see everybody. And shout out to Justin. He is also uh, the server admin in my Discord server. I don't know how he does it. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, Jimmy, thanks for having me on here. As always, you know, you're, you're one of the reasons I got this channel started and off the ground. And... Uh, Thank you for the chair as well. As always, man, uh, I appreciate it. So anyway, I make YouTube videos about DeFi, crypto, animals, whatever. And I, like Justin said, I also just like helping people and making friends out here. So awesome. Yeah. And I just yeah. want to clarify, Yabonks tends to do 
a uh, six hour stream on the short end, 20 <laughs> yeah, hour no, no, no. stream on the long end. We are not going to be doing that. Uh, Come on, I'm guys. Like, I'm like 90 minutes max. Like, I just don't have the energy to go longer than that. Um, so that's what we'll be at, doing here today. At least four hours. Come on. You know what? Maybe I'll hop off. If you guys want to keep going, it'll, it'll end up everybody <laughs> will be kind of popping off. And that we could, we should just have a stream that's always going and just YouTubers jump in as they're yeah. available. There's an idea. I think that's an awesome idea. Yeah. Well, Yablonks has never done that before, and nor has he left somebody all by himself during his <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Yeah. We Justin, thanks sure. for stepping in and co-hosting my 12-hour-long shows when I have to go be a good husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, just really quickly, sorry, yeah. James, just for anyone watching, with Alex's channel, if you see a six-hour live stream, watch the last half hour. It goes so deep and so interesting. They're so crazy, but they're well worth a watch. Thank you, yeah, Sean. You never, I appreciate you. You never quite know what deep thoughts your bonks is going to be. If you, yeah, you get late enough into the stream and it's like, what do you guys think is the purpose is of, of life? Like, what are we here for? Are you alone in the universe? And I like so, that. Yeah. Well, you That's totally fun. channeled your bonks there. Yep. Yep. Uh, Kyle Bunga wants to know, where's Austin? Austin ended up having a family dinner. He's trying to be a good boyfriend they're not married right the boyfriend so trying to trying to do good family things so we can't fault them too much for that if you guys have discussion topics um either in the audience or any of you as youtubers if there's something in particular i have a couple things i want to talk about but then i the the wind can take us where it will um first question from andrew i'd like to know how many members of the panel hold a hydro whale nft and i think i have four so i do who else is currently a hydro whales holder me, I uh, I hold one. Okay. I've got one too. Okay, yep. Uh, Hydra whales again. I one wish. of the one of the teams in the space that I feel like is building something good, um, and I do want to talk about that uh, too. Um, Dave, Dave Fi says we should create a Crypto Avengers Discord that kind of connects all our communities. Um, I'm not going to do that, but yeah, Pocket. Um, <laughs> you, you do it. I will, uh, I will volunteered. Yeah. I've been voluntold, eh? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Um, let's see here. When James Pelton NFT. So my Forex NFT is out. The first batch is sold out. I'm going to get that trading, work out any kinks. Um, and then we'll all expand to an another batch. And yeah, just wanting to build some things in the space that aren't going to rug and where you don't lose money. Losing money is the worst way or the most damaging thing to reaching your financial goals. Like it's better to not make any money than to lose money. I mean, that seems like common sense but in this space it's been hard um so let's talk about it dan you have a good question i do want to get to that but let's start with the topic that i think is on a lot of people's mind and that's all the rug pulls that are going on so we had uh i think i, I can't keep track of all the names of all these projects but i think circulate rugged this week and yield robots i think it looks like they officially rugged and rely fund is maybe not rugged but you know exploit or you can't get your money out or whatever all these projects, whether you call it a rug pull or whatever, it's kind of all the same thing. You lost your money if you had it in there. Um, I wanted to, I have some thoughts of my own, but I'll try not to monologue too much. So I'll open it up. What are you guys doing on your channels to kind of protect against this, to try and help the community? What have you learned maybe in the past year or however long you've been going um, to help make the space better going forward? Uh, and in no particular order, just popcorn in if you have something to say. I want to say something. <laughs> so I, I've been working on this for almost a year now, and I call it the Yabonk standard, and a bunch of the other YouTubers here even use it when dealing with sponsored video work, and it's basically four to six conditions that are adaptable based on whatever you're comfortable with. Basically, it's to first, uh, I need to briefly video chat with at least one of the project owners so I can see face-to-face -face who's leading the project. And that's why Manish from Yield Robot didn't get a Yabonks video because that one stops 80 to 90% of the scams from getting to my channel. Um, and then the other one is the project owners have to give me their word they're not going to rug pull or commit financial fraud. I know this is weird, but it's like an honor code thing. And if they just, and like, if they look me in the eye and say that, like, I'll give them a chance. They can run their DeFi experiment or whatever. But if they betray me and my audience, like everybody gets one. And the next time they try to come around with a different profile, project and name, and I see them again in my pre-screening call, I'm like, yeah. hey, I remember you, you screwed me over. And I 
push them out of the network of all my friends out here. Um, the next one is I don't pump or shill, and I indicate to my viewers that all my videos are sponsored, that are sponsored, and I give my honest, objective analysis and opinions to the best of my ability. So I try to be unbiased, but if I've got a bag like a hydro whale or something, and I'm talking about hydro whales, I'm going to let my audience know I've got a hydro whale. I want it to do well. So remove that bias from your, your decisions and your judgment as you're making your own informed decision if you want to participate in this project. Uh, and then I only take payment up front and in stable coins. And uh, I'm sure you guys have uh, learned at some point that if you take native tokens from these projects and they end up being worth jack squat, uh, no offense, jack's passive income, but if they become worth jack squat uh, after you put in 20 to 40 hours of work or something, like that really hurts, right? And then uh, you must, and then I either have to get a KYC from a reputable company or they have to be fully doxxed where I can find their home address on the internet within a few pages of a Google search. Um, and then the next thing is I don't use any referral links personally. I don't have a problem with it. If people want to use referral links, that's cool. Uh, but I don't use them for financial products or crypto or DeFi just because I'm not like a financial advisor. And I know it's kind of like unregulated and there's not really guidelines. So I'm just like, I'm not going to do that for now until I have more clarity. Other people, I have no problem if they do it. And I use uh, affiliate commissions for like Amazon products and stuff like that. But, you know, like my coffee mug isn't going to rug anybody if they buy it on Amazon. So those are my six hey, conditions of the Yabong standards. And uh, OK, yeah. you know, yeah. I just messaged Tycho. I really like your idea because I've I'm not I'm kind of been against doxing, forcing people to dox personally, um, just because. It's really against DeFi. I mean, it's kind of against what we're trying to do with DeFi in a lot of ways. Um, but I like what you said about they can at least show me face to face. And I kind of like what you said about look me in the eyes and tell me you're not going to rug. You know, so I kind of like that. Um, so that's something I'm going to implement. Uh, anybody I, else? I don't need them to dox either publicly. Like if they're if they just meet me privately and talk to me on a video chat, that's good enough for me. I just need to see their face so that way if they try to screw me twice. I can prevent it. Uh, and I know that sounds weird, but it works really well. Also helps me get a gut check, uh, a gut read on people. And if they make my my spidey sense tingle, I'm out of there. Gotcha. And if if you're doing the kind of pseudo kyc and you're like figuring out their home address is the preventing the preventing in the future does that involve a lead pipe <laughs> no no not not oh, personally losing some kneecaps it, it's just so i can tell my audience i did uh, uh uh some due diligence i put some effort forth to kind of make sure they are who they say they are obviously they're still sociopaths that can bypass the system entirely uh, and according to psychology studies, two out of like a hundred people, uh, and, and DeFi is more like two to five out of 50 <laughs> are sociopaths out here trying to get over on people. I, so I that's the cost of doing you. business. Man, you know, you are, you are one of a kind, you bonk. Uh, <laughs> I was, I did like this comment. Andy's feeling so out of place. What is this project? You guys I was going to call about? that out. Yeah, yeah, Andy, what are uh, what are your preventions or what's kind of been your philosophy? You've kind of jumped out of the space that the rest of us are in a little bit. Do you just want to talk about your philosophy and do you plan on getting back into projects at some point or what are your thoughts? Um, well, I mean, I've always been the least, I mean, at least uh, James, you're the only one I've I talked to on the regular here, but uh, I've always been the least degen of the two of us for sure. Uh, I don't know. I just I, I, I went into this whole space. Um, I mean, I've been in the space for several years now, uh, five or six years now, but I went into this whole um, crazy DeFi stuff uh, space uh, when it was all blowing up with the idea that if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And then I got sucked in a little bit here and there and I, you know, bought bought a few and Sorry. learned some lessons. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks primarily to you, James. Thank you very much. Uh, and now I've just backed back off, you know, it's like uh, I, my biggest position is, well, it was Bitcoin and uh, still just uh, doing that. And then Flux. Yeah. Um, and uh, I did take a few sponsorships earlier in the year and I don't do any of those anymore. I don't take any sponsorships from anybody who's uh, has an invest investable product. So uh, only companies that have nothing to do with stuff uh, in the in the crypto space. Um uh, investing and stuff but uh yeah uh, that's it it's like i just don't get involved with all this stuff um and will i dip my toes back in sure if there's going to be some fun 
uh ponzi's i can i can jump into early when there's still lots of fomo frothy stuff going on in the market yeah I'll, I'll jump in uh early enough but i probably won't talk about it on my channel uh and i might uh, not even uh tell the closest friends about it just do it privately make my money and then get out but uh yeah not getting involved is probably my number one thing these days i mean that andy, is a good way to not get rugged andy you're even more hardcore than i am with the with that stuff man good for you that's great yeah well, uh, it wasn't. I mean, wasn't always. I, I, I definitely. I mean, I had my strong nodes. I had my ring nodes. I had my. <laughs> I don't know. Take your pick. I, I bought a. I bought a lot of them, but we yeah. all go through that, I guess, right? Back to my roots. Yeah. It's all learning experience. All learning, mm -hmm. right? For sure. Yeah. Uh, what about what about the rest of you, Sean, Murdoch, Justin, Jack? Yeah. What you guys learn. I'll I'll pop in because I think that uh, that this is something. I mean, even even recently, and I and I've talked to you, Bonks, pretty in depth about this. Um, but this was, I, I mean, to be fair, when I started the channel, like I had no clue what I was doing in DeFi either. Right. So everything that would come across um, when I was simply trying to like, just kind of showcase like, Hey, like this is crazy. Like you guys hear about this thing called time wonderland, right? Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to share and make videos and content because I was excited about it. Um, and it becomes very challenging, like as as a YouTuber, as I started to grow uh, and also gain more knowledge on DeFi as a whole, like how to separate those things and how to best look out for my audience. Right. Uh, and understanding that that me as a YouTuber with, I would say, a decent size following, like has power when I put a video out about a specific project. Um, so, like I said, I've been working with, with a couple other people, but definitely uh, what Yabonks spoke about earlier and like that kind of uh, those kind of conditions that he has in place is done is definitely something that I'm looking to, to implement. Um, and I've already started doing things like that. I've, I've released a video kind of talking about that kind of stuff today. And, and I think what I what I hope to accomplish, not only with um, protecting my audience or, or the people that watch my videos, but but also in hopes that I can affect a positive change for for other YouTubers that may be in the same kind of situation that don't really have like uh, standard operating procedures and and how to like navigate this space where you you have projects that want to throw a bunch of money at you and and all you have to do is make a quick video about it. So, um, yeah, that's 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 my plan moving forward to, to hopefully um, lead by example. So. As an aside, can we just go back to when Time Wonderland was right. the hot shit on the block and when we were all using the calculator to see how many Lamborghinis we were going to yeah. earn per yes. month? Can we just they go back to that? that one. They got I those totally the missed days. that. I came into DeFi after that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. You missed out. Those were the days. Well, and then yeah. I, I got burned because Daniela, is that how you pronounce his name? I don't even know. Daniela. But he said, we are going to do buybacks if the price reaches this. So if you do leverage and stay below that, there it is impossible for you to get liquidated. And I was like, oh, well, I like that. And so <laughs> I, I leveraged way up with the price right below that, woke up the next morning, and my time was all gone. And I was like, oh, oh well, that was interesting. So, yeah, <laughs> learning experience. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I will say I've happen? never been thankful that I used leverage in crypto yeah. trading mm. personally. I've been burned lots of times. Uh, so um, what about you, Sean, Jack, Justin, any other lessons that you guys have learned? Yeah. yeah look, sorry. No, sorry, Sean. Jack. Go. No, Sean, go ahead, man. Go for it. Um, so, so the biggest thing is just trying to stick to the facts about the protocol. Um, but a lot of the things that I learned from Alex is seeing the project's face, even if they don't want to come on and dox themselves through an AMA or whatever, talk to them backstage, have a couple of phone conversations, video conversations, and you do get that gut check. Is it always going to work out? No. But if they've got like a, a proper KYC in place that's linking them back to the control of the project's funds as well, um, you know, there's a great project out, out there doing that and sort of getting ahead of their curve. I think that's a, a pretty big thing. And then for the community, just urging them, if they're in profit, nobody ever went broke taking profit. So take profit, take your initial back. It's all house money. The sooner you can get back to playing with house money, it, it really doesn't matter. Like, yes, it sucks if you're up, you know, 10x on house money and you lose it all, but you're not not worse off. And like you were saying, James, 
the biggest thing to becoming financially stable is losing money. So if you can protect that initial capital and put it into something safer, you know, I always talk about Bitcoin. I, I love Bitcoin. It's my biggest holding there. And, and whatever, none of this this video for anyone watching is financial advice, but just maybe not going to that extremity of praying on, on on hope in some of my videos like at the start there was a little bit more my wife hates this word but hopium and and stuff and talking more about the ponzinomics and the fomo around the project but what is actually happening and like is there a real world use case or are they doing what they're saying they're doing or are they just talking about whatever they want the community to hear and bringing awareness back to that so people can make an informed decision and when and James, when when Sean is saying house money, uh, he's not saying uh, the money you would you would spend on a house <laughs> worth. To play with that. Thank Just you, to thank you for clarifying, clarifying that. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to add? Yeah, look the uh, the biggest thing for me is uh, I think going forward is you know speaking and and asking the the devs or you know people the project more tough questions before even entertaining the idea of bringing them on for a video because you guys know it you guys know how it is especially in the bull market you know we're getting emails or telegram messages 50 100 times a day of people wanting to come on the channels um you know, it's very difficult to go down that path of, of speaking to every single one of them. But if I can pick out, you know, I've always done this. I've only taken projects that I think that, that I like or, or I think have sort of runway to make profit. But I think more tough questions to those people before even entertaining that conversation before coming on, um, I think it's important. First of all, you know, I think audits, an audit of a contract. I know a lot of projects do it already, but that should be just a a baseline standard of, of every project that comes out also asking about kyc and look if they don't want to dox publicly then that's fine but if they're going to do a kyc that kind of thing then um you know that's that's good that's some um, it, it's a step of course they can still get exploited or hacked we can't you know get around that but um you know if they if they're going to do a kyc then then that's a, a step forward in my opinion so i think the biggest thing is asking the more tough questions directly to the developers or the project themselves and then for the community you know one of the biggest things that i've been trying to a uh, message that i've been trying to get across in my videos over the last few months in the bear market is get your initial out as soon as you can um and play with as sean said house money um so one strategy for me is looking at the time lockup in a, in a project you know sometimes we have 30-day lockups if i think of the projects in the last 30 days of course i don't have a, uh, a crystal ball that's going to tell me that but depending on the market conditions and what the community sentiments like for that project then if I think I can get my money out in 30 days, great. And then after that 30 days, I'll pull that initial. And then once I've got my initial, uh, once I've got my initial back and I'm playing with house money, maybe I'll start compounding then. But the biggest thing for me is don't compound until you get your initial back, until you've kind of protected yourself there um, and sort of go forward. So that's in terms of the message that I'm trying to put in front of the community. But in terms of the devs, I think it's just asking more tough questions directly to their face. Um, and I think that will you know, put us in a, in a, in a, in a good step forward. So that's, uh, that's my plan. Next question. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Anymore. I think we've yeah, gotten yeah, through yeah. that. No, I, I wanted to say one thing too. I have decided <laughs> I've, I put it on Twitter, but anything that promises a certain return, I just have never seen like, that's not how revenue works in businesses. That's not how dividends work. Like that's not how anything works in the real world. So there's I, there's just no conceivable way for it not to be a Ponzi if you're guaranteeing a certain return. Like that's it should be variable based on actual like if you're doing trading, it's, it, trading doesn't give you a percentage a day. Like that's not how any trading ever works. <laughs> Wait, um, you mean you mean I'm not gonna get two percent a day? I thought I was gonna turn a thousand dollars into ten billion dollars in two I've, years, James. I've been doing I mean, it for a while in some projects, but. Yeah, yeah. No, that's just something I'm gonna do. If they offer a guaranteed return, I'm gonna just say that I, I, yeah, 100%. I'm not really interested in that. Um, so, anyways, yeah. Next question. So, I'd like to know what do you guys feel like in the markets? And I will get to audience questions. Um, what do you guys feel like is a good play right now? That's actually you're actually excited about it right now, not in the future. You're excited about it right now. It's a good way to make money right now. What are you guys excited about? Yeah, I can jump in here. Um, tr true seekers. So talking about transparency and KYC, I believe the utility for that, and I believe with all these rug pulls and stuff, 
the community as a whole is going to start demanding that we can verify who has control of a project's funds. I think they're a bit ahead of the curve there and being able to adopt that out, I think, for a long-term play. Of course, it's open to user adoption and stuff, but I believe that will be the KYC standard. So I think that's a really good uh, DeFi play at the moment. For me, I just, I'm liking the, and I'm not, I was never a big NFT fan at before, but now there's NFTs that are coming out with really solid utility. It's not going to be overnight wins. Uh, we're talking bourbon on blockchain, Kadena hashing, Ace Miners, like all these ones that are investing in real life utilities that are bringing money into DeFi, not just recycling the same money that's inside this space. Those are the ones that I like. I want stuff because right now the problem is we've got very little money in DeFi. So to me, the stuff that's going to bring money into DeFi and has some real life use cases, that's what I'm excited about right now. They're not, unfortunately, plays that are going to pay me tomorrow. So I still have my DGen fund that I, again, same kind of thing, not going to go crazy about. Um, but uh, but yeah, I want to validate our nodes even. Is, that's still bringing new money in kind of and and uh, minor stuff and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's my quick two cents. Yeah, uh, for me, um, James and Andy, I know you guys have made videos on it, Fracture Mining. Um, I think it's got massive potential, and I love the fact that they're bringing Bitcoin mining to the masses without having to buy a, you know, I, James and Andy, you guys know the names better than I do, but, you know, spend thousands of dollars on a miner and factor all the electricity costs. You can buy the NFT and, and get that passively too. So I love the idea of Fracture Mining. And man, outside of DeFi, I just love staking Ethereum right now. I'm just buying up as much Ethereum as I can and staking it on uh, on Lido. And, and yeah, man, I'm just loving dollar cost averaging into Ethereum. Caught this nice pump, which is nice. But um, yeah, buying Ethereum outside of DeFi and then fracture mining is, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm liking it. Love it. Anybody else? Yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say necessarily that there's a specific project that I'm most excited about. But I think what I what I would like to see more of is uh like fractionalized businesses in the real world that pay you uh, in crypto, uh, maybe as like as an investor in a different business or something like that. I think that that has a potential to be to be pretty cool uh, in the future. And I don't know, I don't know if I, I, maybe that's kind of like on the on the on the same kind of forefront of like what Project Seventy Nine is doing and stuff like that. But I would really see, I would really be interested to see like how this would work if if uh, you had a group of people and they kind of all pulled money together to start a business in the real world. And then like a portion of profits on a monthly or quarterly basis is paid back to investors. Um, so I think something like that would be pretty cool. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, that's exactly. In fact, somebody asked where that question go, what's a problem that NFTs can fix in the future and I think that's one of them is just like kind of an easy way to crowdfund until the U.S. regulators right. make it not work, not work anymore. But yeah, if you need, you know, 40K to start up this business or, you know, whatever you want to do, a lot of people don't have 40K or most people don't have 40K sitting around. But you can say, hey, let's get 80 people with 500 bucks together. We can each own a portion of it. So it's a way to owner way of ownership, like you yep. were saying. Um, I, and that's kind of how I've been using NFTs in my community and have a lot of plans for that going forward. So yeah, totally, totally agree with you there. Yeah. So, and that's what I'm excited about. I am excited about project 79. I know a lot of people aren't, um, but I've seen the revenue that they make and that they're paying out. And so, I, and I love the team. Like the team is just standout team, like doing everything they, they consult their lawyer for everything and really well. Uh, structured. Uh, I'm also excited about the shiny jackal bots. Andy doesn't like the name, but war bots is what they're uh, called. Um, been doing 9% for 15 months. Uh, but again, even that I would say, get out your initial, like you were saying, Sean, get out your initial play with house money. Like don't just compound into oblivion because you, you never know with bots at some point, something happens. I, FTX goes down. Murdoch, right. you were talking about yeah. you lost money in uh, FTX. So get out that initial and then at least if something goes wrong, you're not down a whole bunch. Like um, so. And then, yeah, I've been putting together a bunch of NFT collections for a bunch of different things. Um, and so on my own projects, I'm going to be excited about going forward because I know that I will handle the funds uh, well. So 
Yeah, I did um, forget to say iBots, I guess, since I'm kind of on the team for that one. But <laughs> yeah, iBots. Yeah, and they're building they're building trading bots. They're looking for kind of a modest, you know, five no guaranteed return. Yep. It's all whatever we get that day. If we get zero dollars that day, you get zero dollars that day. It's totally uh, on on the up and up in that sense. So, and we're bringing forex trading to try and diversify it a bit and bring some different diversification. Anyways, I'm not gonna. Yep, love it. There. Okay, well, let's, uh, if anybody else, you feel free to jump in. We're probably not going to be able to do seven opinions on every single question, or this will take forever. So um, I'll just bring up a few questions, and then whoever wants to jump in, maybe like three, two or three people can answer, and then we'll go to the next one. Um, does anyone want to say what their first, first job was and what they learned from it? Sure, I'll go first. Um, my first job was... My business, I dropped out of high school, and I don't recommend anyone doing this. Um, but I dropped out of high school, and, and it was I, I ran and still do run an online marketing agency outside of uh, DeFi and crypto. So started that in high school, dropped out, and basically done that, and that's what allowed me to get into DeFi and start living on it full time. So what did I learn from it, man? I mean, when you're starting a business in high school, you learn you learn a lot. So countless uh, lessons that you learn from doing that, but. Yeah, that was my first and an only job, I guess. <laughs> there you go. And then straight to entrepreneur, yeah, straight to entrepreneurship for Jack. There you go. Love That's it. That's the way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Andy, drop some alpha. Reveal a project you've invested in and never told anyone about. Um, I mean, I've told I think at least someone about just about everything I've got into. I did just buy six of James's uh forex trading bot nfts um and he's personally promised and guaranteed that i would never lose money with it which i'm excited about uh, i bought fraction mining i'm excited about fraction mining uh i also did after lots and lots of time of james talking about it and talking to me about it i did finally invest in project 79 so prepare yourselves for that one to fail now because i finally invested in it <laughs> uh oh uh, i i will say um i am a big proof of work guy um i don't know if anybody on here is familiar with neoxa but they're dropping their master nodes q1 of this year so in the next two months i'm pretty stoked on that so i bought enough to run i think 10 nodes for neoxa but that's old school proof of work uh coin but there you go there it is look at that there you there's go. some there's it's very it's tiny microscopic cap so do what this, you want with that. This is as degen as Andy gets is uh low low cap proof of work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mining. get super degen when it comes to like micro caps. I just don't get into it as much with the DeFi stuff. If I have to break out the MetaMask wallet and Andy has red flags going on. <laughs> yep, absolutely. That's not entirely true. Um what do you think of bourbon and blockchain? Somebody mentioned that already. Um was that you, Justin? That I did. That? I did. Um, yeah. I mean, they've got a, a couple of docs people in there. They've got a really neat community. They're doing validator nodes as well as some mining and it's all in-house. Uh, yeah, I really like it. I, I think it's a great uh, opportunity and it's people that have been in the space for a while. It's not some guy jumping in going, I can make money. I'll get some programmer to do this. Some of this will do that. They've got a whole team of people that know what they're doing. So uh, I do appreciate what they're building there. Okay, very good. James, are you still loving Project 79? Yes, Eric, I am. And good to see you, Eric. Hope you're doing well um, through all the rug pulls as well. Um, okay, this is a good question. So AMZ Doge, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this one. Very, very, very um, degen play, okay? So it's... it's it <laughs> reminds surprised me to see COTPS. Andy put the thumbs down there. Yes, it reminds <laughs> me totally of COTPS. Like they don't even have a desktop version. It's just this mobile version. Um, but James, they have Magic Johnson on board. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Andy were talking about this the other day. They have Magic Johnson saying, hey, I'm part of AMZ Doge, but it's just a cameo. You can pay celebrities to talk about your project. <laughs> um, but this brought up a question. Where did it go? We got a lot oh, of questions here. Uh, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Oh, yes. What do you think about DGen DeFi in general? Does it have a place in crypto? Because I've been in a lot of these similar to like COTPS or uh, Novatech or any some of these projects where, you know, you, you're in for three months and you've doubled your money. And it's like it's totally degen play, almost for sure Ponzi nomics. Is it worth 
do these place do these projects have a place to play? Should we just as influencers ignore them? What are your guys' thoughts on that? I love DGen stuff, honestly. If you're like a informed adult, and you know you, you know you should be able to gamble however you want. I think this is DeFi, it's decentralized, and you know just make your own choices and be wise. And if you're not, you're gonna learn real quick. Um, and just be careful about, you know, being misled by people, um, you know, make your own choices and, you know, use critical thinking to figure out what's what makes sense for you. And always use disposable income that you would take to the casino. Mm -hmm. Right. 100%. And be like, uh, if I lose this, it's gone. Just write it off immediately. As soon as you put it into one of these things, if you get something out of it, consider it a, a boon. Yeah, I think it has way less of a place in the bear market, but in the bull market, especially if you can get in early and you can survive like eight or nine out of 10 of them rugging you before you get your initial out, uh, if you can survive that, then man, you can make some serious money if you get in early with the, the degen stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Not I've kind of tried apart, though. Yeah. I've kind of tried to separate my, because like I have a certain amount of my portfolio that's dedicated to casino degen plays. But then I have an actual investment portfolio that I would never consider putting into AMZ Doge that doesn't even have a desktop version on their website, you know. And and so James, I've, the the DGen part's only ninety percent of the portfolio, right? Just yeah, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's ninety percent DGen, ten percent. Um, yeah, and I think so. I've tried to distinguish on my channel. I've have an. Uh, personality called crypto jimbo which is like hey <laughs> just so you know like this is not a play you're never going to make generational wealth off of two percent a day ever you that no one in the history of the world has made big chunks of wealth at two percent a day okay that's not how investing works so you have to just kind of know what you're what you're getting into um but then again we do projects like that and then I make a video and I say in the video, like on the yield robot video, they were mad at me because I said, this is a Ponzi only use disposable income. It's not going to last very long. And then still tons of people uh, got into it. And they, Oh, I got burned by yield robot. And so, yeah, I, I, anybody else have opinions on, do we just push these out of the space completely and never talk about them again? Or what are your thoughts? Just a quick thing on on my side, I guess, of it is the thing is with it and where we look at projects like and not to go into but yield nodes, you can have these projects that are not very degen, quote unquote, that seem very safe, quote unquote, and they don't go anywhere. The nice thing with these degen plays is at least you can ROI very rapidly and yeah. get your initial out. So good, bad, ugly. I mean, it's better than going to the casino, better odds as far as I'm concerned um, and and way more fun. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my I two cents. I, I really want to say you made a great point there that when I'm when I'm looking at my personal like risk reward tolerance for something, if I have to risk some capital for a year to get my return back in DeFi, that's a lot of risk, a whole year to risk something not going wrong. But if I potentially could only risk that capital for two weeks and get my ROI and then get out and play with house money, to me, that almost seems like a better risk reward proposition for my personal choice and also if i want to do something dgen and talk about it on my youtube channel i'm going to do that right i don't think anybody should tell me what i can and can't do um especially on youtube as long as i'm not doing anything illegal and i'm trying to be responsible with how i talk about it to my audience you know exactly. that's my personal choice if it's a sponsored video though and they want to pay me to get on my channel i got some other rules in place but if i yeah. want to do some DeFi dgen stuff and be like hey guys check out this crazy shit i'm doing plow like yeah. i should be able to do that it's fun yeah, you know? just, totally just adding on to this conversation really quickly, it's probably a little bit safer sometimes in gambling because there's so much more information out there on the internet. You can read the community sentiment. You can see the shift in the chat. So you've got more points to be able to be like, all right, like this is starting to turn. Let's pull our money out. Whereas if you go to the casino, like you get what you get, but you can see all the YouTubers, they're all FOMO. They start fudding. All right, maybe I need to get out of this pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally is agree. Yep. Um, are, here's a good question. Are you compromised for being paid to promote projects that are not vetted? What are your responsibility as big YouTubers in providing these scams a platform? Hmm. I'll leave that for someone else. Obviously, it's not. Uh, by the way, hey, me. shout out. I'm not very big. Like, so. I, I want to say, anyway, I don't... shout out to Bird Dog the Crypto Ronin. Actually, I love his uh, YouTube channel. 
I've been watching him for months now. I, I was, I think, one of the, his first subscribers back when he had less than like 20 subscribers. And I, I really enjoy his content. I think he keeps it super real. Uh, and so are you compromised for being paid to promote projects that are not vetted? So that's, I think it's it's hard to define what vetted means in this space. So I think that comes down to each personal YouTuber and how they do business. And we all kind of have to learn and adapt and come to, you know, figure out what works best for us and, and our audience. Uh, you know, <laughs> the day that I talked about a project uh, that I kind of was working for as a paid mod. And one guy was like, I saw how excited you were on your channel. And I put $140,000 in this project. It's worth $10,000 now. Uh, that, that hurt me, right? Like that, that was real, a real eye opener to me. And it was a rebasing project, right? He held to zero. He could have got out earlier with gains, but still I like, I like at, ever since then, I like really ramped up how I talk about any project that I have any kind of financial compensation for. So over that last year, I've really refined that process. <laughs> anyway, hope that, hope that helps. Oh, I, mean, think... I'll... Oh, oh, go ahead. I was just saying, I, I think that we do, I think as YouTubers, we do bear some responsibility there. Um, however, I also think that there's, it's, it's kind of a fine line to, to walk between like wanting to, to share about a project that, that, that I might, cause I like the DJ and stuff personally. Like it's, it's a fine line between protecting uh, the audience and, and also like wanting to, to talk about what I'm doing in DeFi and like just share what I'm doing. Right. Even if it's not like a, a sponsored video or something like that. So, but I think Ubonics is right. Like, you know, having a, a set of criteria, like, on what to do moving forward, I think is definitely something that's that's going to help not only myself, but I think other YouTubers in general. So, yeah, look, uh, I I agree. You know, as um as YouTubers, of course, we can do our best in terms of asking these questions and looking into the projects before we even entertain doing a video on it. Um, but you know, again, we can only do so much in terms of our research into the developers, into the project itself, and if we're giving out all of the information that we have on the project, um you know, of course, stuff can still go wrong, right? So it's a very fine line. And I don't know what the answer to it is. You know, I don't think there is one right now. And I think we're all just navigating this space at the same time. But everyone, if everyone knows the risks, risks involved, only using risk capital, we do everything we can. And we know that we've done that. Um, you know, what's the answer going forward? Well, I think as Murdoch and a couple of the other guys have touched on, if we have our you know, set sort of criteria, if you like, in terms of what we're looking for out of the developer and the project. And we know we're doing everything we can before we do a video on that. Uh, I think that's all we can do, you know? I think that uh, as a viewer, uh, there needs to be more education on our part to remind the viewer that none of us know what the hell we're talking about uh, at the end of the day. Like, um, if if FTX can happen and uh, Black Rocks of the world can have done their due diligence and not seen that coming, uh, it's not the fault of YouTubers for um, promoting it and also falling victim to that. Uh, yeah. Simultaneously, uh, you know, not you know, all promotion is not good promotion, um, but you know, any amount of attention you give something, it is giving it, uh, it is attention. So you have to weigh that. It's like you know, if there's uh, a troll out there, someone who uses up these platforms and spreads hate or whatever. If you make a video talking about how bad it is that they're doing that, you're still technically giving that person press. Mm -hmm. um, so the only way you can actually deal with that is just if everyone collectively decides, hey, let's all not talk about this thing. But that's an impossibility. <laughs> so you have to weigh the other side of it, which is, mm -hmm. do I talk about it? And do I try to be a really reasonable, rational rational uh, voice in the space and ask critical questions and and be critical of it um, in a responsible way. So I don't I don't know what the answer is myself. My answer was I stopped taking paid promotions. I stopped talking about a lot of things. Uh, that was my personal answer. That's not right for everybody. It was just right for me. Uh, but it's certainly a big balance that you have to wrestle with doing this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was uh, obviously I've taken a lot of heat for some of the product. But one thing that I've tried to do is, yeah, I have 51,000 subscribers or whatever. And I used to try to make content for 51,000 people and it just wasn't working. Like different people were at different stages and I just couldn't do it. And so now I have my smaller community. I had a member in my community say, hey, I put $10,000 into Yield Robot. Would you mind doing an AMA with them? And hopefully I feel better about what I've done after the AMA. 
And so I'm not going to tell that person, no, I'm not going to do it. I am. I kind of like direct my content towards my community and other people are happy. They are welcome to watch, but I'm intending in my community, I feel like has a good feel. Like we're chatting all the day, all day about, Hey, Yield robot is not looking good. Get your initial out, you know, and things like that. We're talking through a lot of that stuff. So I'm, yeah, I'm not, uh, honestly, I not super interested in what the masses say about what content I produce. I'm going to create content that I know my community has asked me for and what they want and what I enjoy making. And I'm going to try to educate as best as I can about, yeah, Hey, this, I think this is a Ponzi. It's going to fail. Um, but yeah. That's that's my take, but it's definitely I don't think there's a right answer. Like everybody has a different opinion. And again, if you don't like the content a specific influencer is producing, unfollow them, unsubscribe. If you don't like to ever see a DJ play, unsubscribe from me. Notify when your friend Andy posts a video and only <laughs> watch your friend Andy. I, and that, I'm fine with that. Like if, if my content's not serving you, move along and that's fine. I will also say that like there is just also a, a extreme lack of. Uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to pass the buck here. Um, I mean, there is certainly, you know, as a as someone who does online videos and stuff, there there is a share in in all of this. Uh, but there is um, a a a real lack of uh, self responsibility with a lot of these things. It's like, you know, if you hear five people talk about it and you get into it just because they talk about it, you didn't do any critical thinking on your own. Is that the fault of the people who you lit you, you watched and listened to? No, he didn't reach through the computer screen, gr grab your mouse hand, and force you to click the buy button. Um, there is shared responsibility, but ultimately, it's in the end of the day, it's up to you. And uh, I see in the comments, um, uh, John here is making a point about the law and Ponzi schemes and stuff, but you can't know like what the what any of these things are. Something that you look at and you view as it as this is absolutely 100% a Ponzi scheme, definitely. It might not be. It might also be. But it's like FTX, who knew that was a Ponzi scheme until after the fact. So now is it illegal for all the people who promoted it and stuff? Like there'll be all kinds of litigation and stuff in the process. But like these are impossibilities to know. It's like this is all unknowable, unnavigatable space. And so you just have to be as responsible as you can in it. Uh, and there's no black and white like rules like that you can just lean on. Um, so I, I, I just don't buy into a lot of that. Uh, on investor.gov in the US at least they have like 6 to 12 different criteria that they use uh in, in a case by case basis usually after the fact to uh rule subjectively to make a judgment whether something's a ponzi or not so like like Andy said we we don't know there aren't really guidelines to say yes this is a ponzi or not that literally is determined in a court of law and it's subjective it it can it can change on a case by case basis based on like a dozen different factors, at least in the US. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I want to shout out to Enrique, you kind of it's snuck so in Enrico. and good to see you, Enrique. Glad that you could join us here today. Enrique. Yes. What's Enrique, up, everyone? How you doing, man? And, uh, uh, busy, busy. Uh, sorry, I'm in my car. I'm outside of one. Of, I'm, I'm in a parking lot outside of one of my tax offices. So it's our busy time of year. And uh, I'm very understaffed this year. So, uh, I apologize that I'm in my car like that one uh, safe food guy that's always making videos from his car. I feel like I'm that guy. Uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. And uh, by the way, uh, Enrique and Andy, not sure if anybody else, but in Austin on Thursday, um, we're going to be meeting up at, is it called Lazar Lazarus Brewery or what's what's the name of it, Andy? L Lazarus Brewing, yeah. Here at Lazarus Austin. Brewing. Yes. Okay. So if so anybody wants to get the address. Yeah. You might want to get the address because there's two of them. So oh. uh, yeah. Uh, so if you look up uh, on my YouTube channel uh, on the on the um, community tab, or uh, I tweeted it out today, there's an evite um, which shows you exactly which one it is, and you can actually RSVP and stuff. It's the Airport Boulevard, the brand new one. Um, but yeah, if anybody who's watching this or anybody who's on here wants to join, it's me, James, and uh, my good buddy, uh, Colin, the Decade Investor. We will be there, but then hopefully we have some people who watch, show up. It'll be fun. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. So um, let's see. More more questions. Um, do we want to talk about Yield Nodes Pro? Uh, give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, who wants to talk about Yield Nodes Pro? Or should we just move on to the next question? Uh, I'll just mention it briefly. Absolutely. Yield Nodes Pro... I'm not a big fan. I have not seen any projects go to like a V2 very successfully. Okay, if V1 fails, 
I've not seen like a transition to V2 where it's like, now it's awesome. And it's kind of, I've been taking, I, this is something I've learned. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So again, like Andy was saying, I don't think we can know um, at the beginning of things, you know, what exactly is going on. But like if Sam Bankman Freed comes out with a new exchange <laughs> and we're all like, yes, we'll get in on this one. Oh I think God. that's on us uh, personally. Um, so that's so my take. You're not going to get you're yeah, the three AC the guys. GTX, yeah, GTX, yeah. man. GT, I saw that. I couldn't believe it. Oh, I can't believe it. No, I don't believe that at all. Um, how do you see AI combining with crypto in the next big thing? I, I think I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts on AI and crypto and those together? And there's a lot of AI trading yeah. and chat GPT is big. What do you got? What do you guys feel like uh how that's gonna fit together? Gonna make seeing fraud okay. even harder. Yeah, I think I people did, are going to probably get wrecked trying to have chat DTP create them a crypto trading bot and they're going to use leverage and probably get wrecked. Yep. Um, but I have been using chat GPT quite a bit and has really helped me create a business plan for like an IRL business, which has been pretty cool. But uh, but yeah, uh, there's there's tons of YouTube videos about, you know, people like trying to, to do side hustles with chat GPT and all that. And it's all cool, but I think, I think uh, this year we're going to see it really explode. Right. Because once it can start to understand uh, like, I, I don't think it's basing its information off of like up to date stuff, but once that can, once that happens and you can like try to predict what Bitcoin is going to do based on a bunch of other stuff like that, that's going to be wild. So. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, an interesting speak. thing about AI, uh, if, if I may, is that I think it's going to be kind of like a narrative thing, just like it was with Metaverse. And what you're going to notice is that you're going to see that the AI tokens, and you're going to see a lot more pop up, a lot more pop up. And what you're going to see is that the ones that you can trade on leverage are the ones that are going to really, really moon when things are really, really mooning. The ones that you can't trade on leverage are going to be kind of like lagging. Uh, so you'll like a good example is that you'll see that sand and mana last year with the Metaverse. They really boomed, their market caps went to unimaginable numbers. And then some of the other metaverse kind of gaming kind of projects like UFO lag behind, did not get as high because you can't buy it on leverage, right? So as we know, leverage is a big part of crypto. It's the reason why you see these big bust and booms. Um, so it's just something to be careful with. But I think the if, if you look at the AI type projects that can be uh, traded on perpetuals and futures, those are the ones that are really, really gonna boom but they're also gonna be the ones that really, really, really bust. So just think about when things are over, when that narrative kind of dies down, when we get into the next bear market, those will be the ones that are probably the best options to short. So those are kind of like my, my that's my two cents in regards to AI. I'll I guess speak we didn't on really the, uh, in Reiki. He probably should let him know, let us know his niche and do his intro that we, he didn't get. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Also, how Enrique, are you, are you Austin? You were talking about <laughs> Lazarus like you knew what I was talking about. Yeah, I live in Austin. I live kind of like in the northwest part up in the hills. So I'm, I'm a bit away from, from where Laster is. But yeah, I'm going to go and meet you guys. Um, it's actually not that far from awesome. one of my offices. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Enrique, uh, yeah. do you want to give an intro for everybody and yeah. tell, like, talk about like, what your channel's about and everything? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name's Enrique, and I've been doing this for about a year, uh, originally from Mexico City, but I live in the U.S. now. Uh, and kind of like my niche is really trying to kind of link and bridge the macro with crypto. When I started my YouTube channel, I noticed that a lot of people in crypto just didn't do a good job of realizing that the price action is mostly going to be affected by the macro, not by how great your project is or how great the founders are, or how great the tech is. It's all about the macro. It always has been. It'll always keep being, it'll, it'll keep being that way. BTC is a risk on asset that is addicted to liquidity more than any risk asset in the world. And um, so you need liquidity in order for the crypto space to do well. So I was trying to kind of, you know, create my channel based around that and based around all other things. I try to show my trades. I try to show everything I'm doing. For a while, I was doing a ton of video reviews and AMAs, but about four months ago, I decided to kind of stop doing that just because the, the macro was so bad. It was affecting DeFi projects the worst. So I just thought it wasn't the great time to talk about that. So I kind of focused my, my channel on really what to short and when. Uh, not all <laughs> charts look the same. Everyone thinks that all, all coin charts look the same at all times. And that's actually far from true. And there's a lot of narratives that you can play into it, whether you're shorting or longing an asset. So that's kind of like what my uh, channel is all about. 
Awesome. Yeah. Enrique is a smart dude. So, uh, and shameless plug, we do a show, me, Enrique, and Austin Clark, <laughs> every Friday called DeFi Money and Everything Else. And we talk about whatever. It, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. just, yeah. I wonder. Yeah. And, and just one other thing to add, I, I did work uh, a long time ago in my 20s. I did work a trading desk for a while for an oil and gas company where I was an energy trader. And I learned a lot about fundamentals of trading. So, when I talk about TA, I'm not just kind of like half-assing it or BSing it. I'm actually talking about things that I implemented when I worked for a publicly traded company under some very strict rules where I, I called myself an energy trader at the time, but I really wasn't. I was just basically doing what they mandated. Um, so I just want to throw it out there that when I do talk charts, it, it is from a place of somewhat of ed education. I'm not saying I'm an expert, but at least, you know, in my channel that I'm talking from someone who's actually like, you know, walk the walk a little bit. Love it. Yeah, Enrique's smart. If you want to, want to learn, go watch his channel for sure. Smart smart dude. I'm looking forward to hanging out with you on Thursday. Um, maybe some you of that too. knowledge can, by osmosis, can come into me and I can uh, learn some of it too. So I don't know. You're the one with all the subs, so I need to learn from you, man. Yeah, well, uh, yeah I don't Yeah, yeah. Honesty. That's, that's what it is. Authenticity. If you tell people how stupid you are, then people <laughs> love that. It makes them feel better about themselves, I think. I don't know. Um, my own brother says you should do karaoke. That'd be good. We might have to do some rehearsing or something. It'd be cool if we could, like, all seven of – how many of us are there? Eight of us could do some, like, harmonies and things like that. Maybe we'll get that together for next time. <laughs> we'll have a real Brady Bunch kind of thing all set up with the nine. Get That'd be awesome. Here. I would love that. <laughs> I would like to do this every so often. So not too regularly because then it becomes old news, but – so often um any thoughts anyone have thoughts on gala or gala nodes they're expensive and i wish i bought them when i first heard about them sub five thousand dollars per node <laughs> yeah i do i think gala's got some good things going for them i don't know how good of an investment the nodes are at this point um i i'm i am not a big fan of the music nodes i know a lot of people got into those but i just don't I don't know. I just don't see it. I think they just needed some money is why they did that. Um, and honestly, I I have skepticism whether or not um, – well, we've seen this in node season, but a lot of nodes are not actually nodes. They're just a way to generate some money for something else. So I, I like Gala, but not Gala nodes. That's kind of how I would go about it. But, I mean, they're building some cool games and things like that. We we're, We've yet to see gaming in crypto really do much of anything. So I'm still kind of waiting on that. Um, honestly, we've not really seen anything. There's been no crypto games that have been. I mean, the last one was what? What was that one that was really boring but made Axie Infinity? Um, yeah. So Axie Infinity was 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 actually a game where it before the narrative became a thing that it was they were already doing their thing, right? So Axie Infinity was actually had tons of users. The problem with Axie is that the token. Uh, was just being inflated at in too high of a rate and it was just destroying the price action. But, you know, with, with Gala, there's a few things to look at. If you if I remember correctly, um, and I don't have my charts in front of me, um, I think their, their circulating supply is really, really low. So you have to be really, really careful with that. But one thing about Gala is that they do have a partnership with Crypto Banter. So you're going to have Crypto Banter talking about Gala to all, their, to all their viewers, like 600K of them all the time. So I think Gala is doing things right as far as marketing. I think they, they, they're, they're all over the place with marketing. They have all the big influencers with them. So I expect them to do well as far as price action, but it's not going to be from fundamentals, I don't think, just because their circulating supply is so low. And like you guys said, gamers are not really into, you know, linking gaming with the blockchain right now. They're just not. They don't like it. They're, they're very much against it. And that's taking a long time to unfold. Now, the real question is, though, the $100 million question or actually more, much more than that, is that going to happen? Are the true gamers going to make that switch to um, to kind of like the blockchain kind of gaming thing with all these th amazing projects that I've talked about my channel because I am a fan of it. But I just don't know if it's going to happen. And if, if we know that the answer is for sure yes, then all these tokens are undervalued. If the answer is no, then all these tokens are highly undervalued. And go check out the... Uh, Go check out the, the the market cap for Gala, for Sand, for Mana. These numbers are sick, guys. For for companies that are like have less than fifty employees and aren't doing much in revenue, it's kind of a joke in some ways. It's all speculation. It's all built on on what the imaginable can be. We don't know what's going to be yet. Gaming and blockchain Sorry, space I rambled to get too long. No, it's good stuff. <laughs> Those together, I have me so excited. But um, 
the problem is what James James alluded to is uh, there's not been a single uh, blockchain uh, crypto based game that I've seen that it actually looks fun to play. They all look terrible um, and they all have bad gaming experiences. So the moment there's actually one that is fun to play, that's going to be a game changer. Or I want to see, let's get the V bucks on the blockchain. Let's get Fort, you know, Fortnite. Get get some mainstream big game and actually then bring it over to crypto instead of building it from scratch in the crypto and having to worry about tokenomics and all this various stuff. Uh, I, I'm very excited about that space, but I haven't seen anything that has yet to make me um, excited enough to put my money where my mouth is. Yeah, look, and just to touch on the gaming and blockchain side of things quickly is I used to be a massive gamer back in the day. And I think to pull, you know, there needs to be a developer, whether that's the developers of Call of Duty or something like that, build a game on the blockchain because a lot of these games that are coming out, I mean, is the, are they really going to get millions of players every year playing? Probably not. Um, so there has to be a AAA, you know, type game come out on the blockchain, but also there has to be some, there has to be education from these developers as well, where they can sort of link the two, the gaming world plus the blockchain world together. And so I don't know what the answer is. It's going to take a while. I do think as crypto as a whole becomes more mainstream, it will happen, but again, there needs to be some sort of game like Call of Duty or, or Fortnite, like we mentioned, on the blockchain, along with a lot of education that kind of brings the two communities together, which, I mean, is going to be a, a difficult task, but whoever can do it first is is going to do very well. Yeah, and I've, I mean, always, I've always cool said... games right now, though. Yeah, Illuvium, I'm Sorry, excited dude. about, but I've always said if, in order for a game, play to earn games to work, it needs to be... You have to have separate currencies. So you need, yeah. most people are going to get money. And that's the, if some people are coming to have fun as a currency entertainment, then you can trade entertainment for money and the ecosystem works. Some people are playing to make money. Some people are playing to have fun and everybody's happy. But the problem with player and games is there's been no fun. So everyone's coming and it's all crypto people that are coming to play and they're all coming to make money. And then it just becomes a Ponzi where there's no, no other currencies involved. So yeah, what I don't get is there's like Flappy Birds, very simple game. I mean that you could make that in a couple of days. And why have those? Why have not those types of games come into crypto? Is kind of something that I've been wondering about. I a funny story. I created Flappy Birds, or at least a, a very similar style game with a ball with wings that flapped and went through like a series of pipes like that when I was a. Uh, 17 years old in high school i made it in flash about uh uh two to three years before flappy bird came out uh for the phone and that guy was making fifty thousand dollars a day off of it and i had posted that flash game on like an obscure free web server on some website and i forgot about it i swear that guy stole my game anyway uh, i could have been rich but now i'm here i'm a DeFi youtuber you know, waiting uh, <laughs> through through the trash to try to to make a fortune. So, uh, you know, life. Yeah, life, life. What are you gonna do? Um, let's see. A any other quick? Let's let's. Uh, how much longer we want to go? Maybe fifteen minutes, ten minutes. I uh, ninety minutes is like my for sure cutoff. I just can't can't do it after that. <laughs> um, Get the pot of coffee, James. Come on, you gotta have it right next to the desk. I just I just can't do it. I just can't do it, man. <laughs> um, James, are you still in GS Partners? Yeah, it's it's a guaranteed return, four point one five percent a week. I mean, it's just it's hard for me to not say that it's a Ponzi. Um, it collapsed at some point, so kind of similar to what we've been talking about before. If you're gonna get into it, make sure you get your initial out. Don't just keep compounding four point one five percent. Um, that's all I would say about that. I had a few people ask, "What are your thoughts on GS Global?" Um, I believe they have some revenue that they're generating, but I don't believe that they're. 4.15% every week. I just have not seen that before. So I'm skeptical about that. Um, let's see. What, How uh, many... No, go ahead. I was going to say what hyperbolic DeFi just said. Uh, this is one of my big um, overall arguments for crypto in general. Uh, crypto hat, everybody in crypto space has this need to put everything on the blockchain. And there's just, there's no need. There's like, there's a whole bunch of things that'd be better served with a centralized <laughs> database running on some servers. Like it's there's crypto has a bunch of incredible use cases and maybe there's going to be a killer app or some killer functionality that is in gaming. But maybe also we learn after doing a bunch of experiments that gaming was never meant to be on the blockchain. It just doesn't work. 
Um, I'm open to either one. But uh, yeah, I think it's a huge like misnomer or myth to buy into this idea that everything is going to be on the blockchain one day. And I just think that's a false narrative. Uh, but you know, I do believe crypto is going to be is the future of a bunch of things and is and is uh, not going anywhere. Uh, those two things can simultaneously be true. I love yeah. that. Yep. Love that. Uh, I've had a lot of traditional businesses. I have a lot. I have traditional businesses connections from when I did more venture capital type stuff. And they say, hey, we want to get on the blockchain. And I've started to ask people like, well, why? Why do you want why? to get on the blockchain? And a lot of times, no reason. We just that seems to be the thing to do. Um, the same reason that people want me to get on TikTok. And I'm like, why? Why do you want me to get on TikTok? <laughs> and they say, because it's the thing to do. So totally agree with that. Um, and maybe one of, some of you have an opinion on this. This was a tweet that struck me really uh, hard. But someone said, if crypto blockchain was to go away tomorrow, it just completely failed, went away, would it really affect, at least in the West here, and you know, in America and in Canada, um, in Europe, would it affect anyone really, other than us as YouTubers, you know, who are investors? And at this point, I would kind of say no. Like we haven't really seen anything where the blockchain has really done anything yet. I don't know. Do you, you guys have thoughts or disagree with that? The only thing I'd say on that is living in the technology age, having Bitcoin as a digital form of gold. You know, you could go back to gold as well, but it just gives you ownership over an asset that you can cross borders with. And it gives you that freedom to be able to control your finances. So I think going into the future, if there's a run on the banks or something, if you do have money, say in Bitcoin, for example, you, you've got control of at least something, a hard asset, or whether that that's silver or whatever it is, diamonds. Um, but living in the technology age, I think that would be probably the biggest change that we'd notice. Yeah, I agree. yeah, absolutely. And that that's one of the reasons uh, I like Constellation. Um, I feel like they're building some things that actually um, would change the life. The problem is it takes a long, long, long time to do something big. And we're, you know, people are wanting stuff so quickly. And it's like, well, I mean, this might be five years before, you know, BioFi is, is a project I'm really excited about, but it might be five years before it's doing something real noteworthy and so yeah requires I, some I, I also like smart contracts because if you use them right like if like say uh, escrow smart contracts i can set up an escrow contract if i want to send you something say sean i want to send you some crypto and you want to give me some gold for it well i don't want that trade to go through until i've got that gold in my hand and you want to make sure that that bitcoin is going to be given to you after you've given me the gold right so i can have it set up where you can say yeah i uh, yeah, we say the gold was given, the Bitcoin goes to you or the Ethereum or whatever, and the deal is done. So I think smart contracts, when used appropriately, do have uh, real utility uh, and, you know, they're immutable, you know, trustless contracts. So I think I think there is a use case for it, but not what we're used to seeing on YouTube where we're talking about DeFi passive income. You know what I mean? I don't really think it's real passive income. I think it's gambling <laughs> most of the time uh, and, you know, some kind of speculative investing. So. And I think yeah. that's just to a good point there is, is it's, yeah, right now, if it was to literally remove itself from the face of the planet, it wouldn't be noticed. But the future opportunities and the changes that are coming, uh, that would change the direction of, I think, where the world could be in 10 years if it was to vanish right now. Right. I think it would it would be noticed if it vanished off the face of the earth right now, but by a, a admittedly very small segment. Uh, yeah, I'll get on my or a minute my... form of time. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll get on my crypto boomer uh, soapbox for one quick second and just say that, like, I mean, I like Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin is it, Bitcoin has changed the world. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Uh, Pandora's box has been opened. It has incredible utility. And one of those utilities among the, the litany is you can literally create a Bitcoin wallet, put your money into Bitcoin, put it in that wallet, and then remember 12 to 24 words in your head. <laughs> I love it. Crypto <laughs> warning, crypto boomer. That's me. Uh, you can you can literally remember the just the words and then walk across a border into a more favorable country or whatever and take all of your wealth with you. 
And yeah. up until now, there's never been a mechanism for being able to do that. Everything else was confiscatable at a border. And now we have something where you can get around that. And that's incredible. Um, and I think that among a bunch of other things with uh, Bitcoin, you can't you can't put that back uh, in. But also cross payment. I know there's a, a, a question about, you know, cross border uh, payments. I think all that solved with Bitcoin. And again, I'm the crypto boomer of the group. But I think there's incredible things there. Uh, and then there's stuff built since then. And on top of that, that are also have incredible opportunities. Well, said, just Andy. for a quick break for Andy, I, I, that I think he needs to realize is I don't think he's actually the oldest one here right now. <laughs> uh, he's so, the oldest one in crypto though i, mean, I, I probably have i have the i just have the crypto boomer mindset i really yeah, i guess yeah. i recognize <laughs> age-wise i might not but i might be older than you think i am who knows yeah i think you've said it before so i'm pretty sure you're younger than me but we don't need to get into that now <laughs> <laughs> um, i do appreciate you andy because i think a lot of us and maybe you guys can tell me who who here came to the space because of a love of crypto and who came more for like, I see a way to make money and I want to kind of get there. I'm kind of I'm probably more on the I saw it as a way to make money. Um, I do like the technology, but I was like, hey, crypto, there's a lot of money to be made. And that's really what drew me in. Who, who's on which side of that fence? So I'm a bit of both. So I've been. I was, I've been in crypto since tw maybe late 2016, early 17 to caught that 2017 bull market. But then I got into DeFi in 2020 when it first came out with uh, Pancake Swap and um, the Cake Token, Staking Cake. That was really the only thing. And uh, I saw the returns and, you know, put, put some money in and saw the, you know, I think it was maybe 70 to 80 percent a year just staking cake back then. Um, so that's really what drew me in past that point because I've been buying, I was buying crypto back in 2017, then saw PancakeSwap come out with the staking. Um, so I'm kind of a bit of both, right? I love crypto, but then also the returns and the money that was to be made in, in DeFi um, definitely helped that transition. So, yeah, a bit of both. Yeah, On I this one, I'm... go for it, Alex, John. You go, go for it. You go for it. I beat you. Go for it. Sorry. Um, like I'm with Jack 50-50, I guess the only way we really heard about Bitcoin and crypto in general was due to the price. And then that brings you in here, or at least for me, it brought me in and got me interested in it. And then I found out the ethics behind Bitcoin, reading the white paper was developed, and that really intrigued me and then led me on to, to study what else is out there and what are they trying to do. And now it's a little bit of both, you know. Um, I, I do think blockchain technology when you have real world use case for it can be life-changing globally it's just how is that utilized in the meantime use it to make money and profit from it i i'm a little bit of both too i came in here for bitcoin because i have some libertarian ideologies that i uh i i, I believe in not not saying i affiliate with any political party because i don't but the libertarian ideologies of sound money uh, decentralization, getting away from central banks, getting away from any kind of centralization, really taking control of a hard asset that I that I can send around over borders and everything like that, that the government can't confiscate as long as I don't put it on a central exchange. I think that's what got me into it initially in 2016, 2017. And then a few years later, I was like, Hey, what's what's this drip and titanium I'm hearing about on YouTube? Oh my gosh, this is these gains are crazy, and now I'm a full blown blown degen. So, yeah. Alex, in my yeah. opinion, uh, saying you're a libertarian is saying you affiliate with no political party. Yeah, exactly. That's what I love about it. <laughs> uh, I don't affiliate with any political parties, but I, I love libertarian <laughs> principles. And, uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, I appreciate you, you Fox. You're I'm you're good, you. you're a good dude. Um, Thanks, okay, man. a couple last questions that we'll uh, we'll hop off here. I know Jack and and Sean. Well, Sean, where are you at? Where are you located at? Yeah, Queensland, Australia, the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef. Oh my goodness! What time is yeah, it there? It's pretty. Uh, it is ten twenty a.m. Okay, uh, Australia yeah. time confuses me so badly. Like, I'm just like <laughs> I have no idea. I have to Google it every single time. What time is it in Australia? It's a real pain in the ass. And then with daylight savings over there and over here and stuff, it, it can be pretty crazy. What a pain. You just have to move to the States, you know? There you go. We'll probably go back. Um, yeah, a beautiful country. Absolutely love the States. We went there. My wife um, is a researcher, um, associate professor. And so we went over there for like three and a half months in the East Coast, West Coast. But 
it's huge. It's just massive. So we want to go back and live there for one or two years. It's awesome. Just a matter just, of time. Yeah, just don't come to Nebraska. It's not not the not the not for everyone. Um, can I ask you uh, how many of you own crypto mining rigs? Do you have them running in the bear market? Uh, I have officially turned off my Kadena miners for the time being um, because the electricity they're making hardly any coins now with the K3 and electricity was getting very high. So I have turned them off. I did just get my heat bit uh, Bitcoin miner slash space heater. Um, so I'll, I'm going to do a video on that kind of reviewing it. But what, what about the rest of you? James, why? I, I don't understand why you have those machines and you haven't piped them into your central AC system and just heat your house with them and then you offset the <laughs> loss on your doing your anyways. And uh, I, <laughs> I, just, I have a uh, uh, go ahead. Just just talk about yourself. Don't talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a uh, 16 Bitcoin miners that are full steam ahead. Um, I have two GPU miners here at the house that are running um, during times like this when all the profitable coins are unprofitable. I'm spec mining stuff that hasn't yet made its way to exchanges yet um, or it hasn't made its way onto what to mine uh, yet. I'm mining Kadena uh, still with one a little miner and then um, I've got uh, nodes and various things uh, operating and uh, collecting. Very cool. Anybody else running any miners? I'm not. If I, I had have, going back to that other question, if I had have come in earlier, I would have been the tech guy probably doing that. I just came in only a year ago and it would not have been a good time as somebody knows here up in yeah. the corner. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, I, I definitely love it. And even flux and all that stuff. I'm like, I'm really hungry for it and have learned about it, but it's just to get the capital saved up to do it. I'm not in that space yet. Yep, I'm absolutely. absolutely. And there, there's so many mining projects now that are NFT. I think those are way better than buying your own. I mean, unless you like it as a hobbyist um, and you want to mess around with the miners. But I think those like they know more. You can get better electricity prices when you pool like that, get to better locations. So unless you're a hobbyist, um, I would I wish I would have done an NFT project like that instead of, you know, I put it like 150 K into Kadena miners and it was. I'm doing a video on my worst crypto investment ever, and it is my Kadena miner. Um, <laughs> but also what you're talking about, James, uh, is ASIC mining, which, yeah, I would agree that maybe for a lot of people, unless you have just really cheap electricity, maybe look at doing one of these other things. But Justin, if you haven't yet you know, uh, had a foray into mining, even with just one GPU, like a nice high-end GPU, just play around with this. Super fun. GPU mining, however... I think that was a great time to buy a couple of GPUs or just keep watching the prices and then do some spec mining. I've made so much ridiculous money from picking things when they first launched that no one knew about. And I just mine them along with a whole bunch of just garbage and shit that is like I have a graveyard of wallets that don't exist anymore. But of the <laughs> ones that were winners, I have unicorns and they were amazing. But it's just fun. If you're a techie guy, you probably love it. Agreed. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Is ne Neoxa you're doing with your GPU? I mined a lot of Neoxa with my GPUs, but now it's on exchanges and what to mine and stuff. So I'm on to other stuff. I was uh, recently, I was on um, some VP, no, not, not VPND. That's, uh, that's Vaporfy. That's uh, Vapor, yeah. Some, something, mm -hmm. something with a V. I don't remember. It's a, it's a little, uh, yeah, ignore me. Something. Uh, it was moment. something somewhere for, for some reason. Yeah. If, I've got, them, I've a... got them running something right now at the moment. I can't remember the name of it. Justin, as a YouTuber, you're probably rendering a lot of videos after you ed edit them. So if you uh, eventually upgrade your computer or whatever and get a, like a 3070 or some other GPU like that that doesn't have like the hash limiting thing on it and everything, that's how I got into it. Like I'm like, all right, I need a video editing machine. And I took my gaming laptop and that's how I experiment. And I watched the hobbyist miner who asked that question. I watched Andy and everything. And that's how Obvious I learned. Is awesome. Gotta, yeah. gotta Everyone should go watch, watch the lot Hobbyist of Miner. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, hey, this is a good question, and I, I'd like everybody to answer it just briefly, but if someone would like to get in touch with you or get on your channel or get a tweet or just let you know what they're doing, what's the best way for someone to do that? What's the process? So for me, if you shoot me a Twitter DM, my team will kind of handle it. If, if you want to do like a video, I have a collab request form, and it's a little bit of an extensive process. Um, but I tweet about things that I, hey, this is cool. I do that all the time. So just shoot me a Twitter DM. My team will get you in touch 
with me and I, I'm happy to look over about anything. Um, so what about, what about for you guys? Yeah. Same, same as that Twitter, uh, or discord, many of the two biggest places to, to reach me. I think, you know, I think we all have similar platforms, right? Twitter, telegram, discord, either of those. Um, I mean, I think we're all everywhere. So, but yeah, for me, Twitter or discord are the, are the main places. I think it's, I think it's important to, uh, to also make sure that you're going to the right social media, right? Because I have yep. a ton of, well, maybe not a ton, but it's happened a couple of times where people try to emulate what I'm doing uh, or like a project will reach out to like the fake Murdoch and then they end up uh, agreeing to a video or, or something and then that money goes missing, right? So that's why I, I try to include like my actual Discord handle, um, my Twitter and telegram and in my videos now so that way you know who i am and and and, uh can reach out accordingly but yeah just reach out through dms also the good thing about twitter now is with twitter blue i know not everyone likes to pay whatever the ten dollars a month or whatever it is to be verified but it stops a lot of those scammers so i mean that's why i pay for it so that you're not you know you're not getting in touch with a scammer right so i mean that's a good way to filter them out as well that's true i'm friends or i've gotten friend requests from fake Murdoch's, fake Andy's, fake Pelton's, fake Jesse Eccles, tons of times. So many J- fake James Pelton's. And I'm like, no, I know the real James Pelton. That's not you. Anyway, all my links are in my descriptions of all my videos on my YouTube channel and DMs and Discord. I am, that's how I respond the quickest. Twitter, I'm a little slower at, but and same with email, but Discord, I'll respond within a couple hours. Yeah. That's funny. I'm going to go in now just because you posted that up there because that was exactly what I was going to say. You can pretty much find me in every Discord I mod. Yes. <laughs> You're on any Discord in, uh, if I'm not modding it, Lady Boss is not modding it. So you're pretty yeah. much going to be the boss there. Lady Boss is my mod too. It's like Justin and Lady Boss are at the top of my Discord. Like, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you guys so much just being around those so much and like answer. So many people have questions and I'm just not around to answer them. And I just like, I love coming back to my Telegram or Discord and the questions are answered. I'm just like, oh man, that's so awesome. I'm so appreciative. So I try. I, we try. <laughs> I, I think one thing for the community, for everyone watching, if you can get in contact with any one of us, you can get in contact with every yeah. one of us Absolutely. as well. Um, otherwise, you know, YouTube, Twitter um, is, is pretty easy. Comment section, mm-hmm. we sort of all look through those. Yeah. Don't WhatsApp the yeah. whoever comments on <laughs> yeah. the videos. Uh, well, I get that really DM. Cool. I actually so started often. getting those now. Yeah. Hey, James, if I send you $5,000, do I really get $10,000 back in 10 minutes? <laughs> oh, no. No, you, that's that's not a real thing. Um, so, I, hey, guys, I love doing this. We should do this again. There's, there's more things I want to talk about, but maybe not today. I'd love to talk about what you guys think about cross-border payments. Uh, someone was asking about that. Ripple. Um, constellation do you think uh, crypto adoption Um, so we'll have to do this again sometime soon Um, but I want to first thank the audience I appreciate you guys a lot of times people put the focus on the influencers but the only reason that we are youtubers is because you guys show up to watch like Imagine if we did this, us eight, seven, eight people got together and no one showed up to watch. It'd be, I mean, it'd still be fun. These are fun guys. But like the reason that we can do what we do is because you guys are around to watch um, and listen and give feedback. So appreciate you guys so much. And I appreciate all you uh, YouTubers who are here today. I, don't, I know some of you better than others, but I appreciate all you guys, what you're trying to do for the space. And again, if there's anything I can ever do to help... Um, obviously reach out to me love to do this again jack maybe we can schedule again for for february or march maybe once every couple months but thank you guys so much thank you thank you uh, thank, thank you guys. james too for all your support Thanks. you give to me I, i've gotten where i've gotten because of some of that so i can't thank you enough and the rest of this gang well a lot of you guys i've i've helped me so i appreciate it yep absolutely so we'll close with this question drip price prediction oh, no. <laughs> uh, of course scott would have asked that <laughs> like, he says zero oh, is it possible God. cryptocurrency can't go to zero though right like oh but it can it, but it wouldn't it be 0.000 i mean it could never go to zero does that make sense uh, anyways that's another topic for another day uh, well, i don't I know would it go no i guess not yeah i don't know yeah so okay well thanks everybody <laughs> <laughs> And everybody, subscribe to all these people if you're not. And hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody.